Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lukes, your professor for Chemical Engineering 3111. We are doing Introduction to Ordinary Differential Equations, and we will be looking at first order initial value problems in this lesson. So, we're only dealing with things that where the first derivative can be written as a function of the independent variable x and the uh, dependent variable, what we're solving for, y. And we have two techniques for this. One is the Euler method and the other is the Runge-Kutta technique. Now the Euler method only works for initial value problems and essentially what you're doing is replacing the derivative with a simple forward difference representation and solving that for yi plus 1. And it's doesn't always work, but when it does, it's easy. It's one of those things that I do end up using it because I can derive it, okay? But a better technique is the Runge-Kutta method. And there are many, many variations of Runge-Kutta, but the fourth order Runge-Kutta is the one that's usually referred to as the Runge-Kutta formula. And this is the form that we're using that applies to first order initial value problems. And we are using h to represent the step size, and we can estimate the next y value, so the next time step, using this yi plus one sixth, a whole bunch of weird terms times that step size, okay, my step in time, if time is my variable. And all those various terms, k1, k2, k3, and k4, are functions of x and y with variations on that step size, as listed here. What we're going to do with this today is a tank depressurization problem. Uh, we're going to be actually comparing the actual depressurization of a tank to the theoretical solution of a first order initial value problem that models this. Now I want you to download and read the handout, but we'll go over it briefly here uh, in just a moment. Now set up a spreadsheet that will solve the problem just as it's described. Be very careful with units as you're doing this. My personal recommendation is that you switch everything to SI units before plugging anything into the equations. It'll work much better. Uh, then. Watch the video, record the pressure read off by the in-class student that's reading out numbers, um, and there I think every three seconds is what he's doing. You can check that in the video. And record those, because what you're going to be doing is modifying the problem you just solved in the spreadsheet to change the initial pressure, so that should not really change anything. And then compare that to the actual depressurization, okay? Now all the values will match what's in the handout, the ambient conditions. Uh, the day we did the experiment were about 21 degrees C and 740 Tor. So let's take a minute to look through the handout. So if you flip through to see where the model is developed, um, first they do a material balance and get this into differential equation form based on what's called the continuity equation, but it's a mass balance. And if we assume that air is behaving as an ideal gas, then we can write the formula for density as shown in equation 6-4. Now, going through and combining these things and doing some rearranging, what we can end up with is that the change in pressure in the tank with time is the negative of the mass flowing out times RT over the volume of the tank times the molecular weight. Now, what is the mass flow rate coming out of the tank? This theory is based on some things that you will be learning in your transport and uh, operations classes. But the mass velocity uh, through a nozzle can be derived in equation 6-7 here. <clears throat> um, 
you have the density in the tank, the pressure in the tank, and the pressure at the vena contracta. The vena contracta is the narrowest portion of that flow when it goes through this little vein, uh, uh, a little orifice uh, on its way out. That's what slows the flow. And if you read through all of this, you'll see that the vena contractor pressure is related to the tank pressure and the specific heat ratio, gamma, which is C sub P over C sub V, and for air, that's 1.4. Now we're doing this at slow enough speeds or a slow, slow enough flow rate where it's gonna be all subsonic. And so the vena contractor pressure is at the exit. And so we can assume that that is the atmospheric pressure the pressure in the tank will be starting out something high and dropping throughout the uh, time. So the pressure in the tank will be a variable, but the pressure at the vena contracta is approximately atmospheric pressure. Gamma, because we're using air, is 1.4. Again, more fluid mechanics. Um, the mass coming out can be related to an orifice coefficient and it becomes the mass flow rate coming out is C sub D, Y, or capital gamma, uh, G, A sub naught. A sub naught is the area of the orifice, okay? The diameter of the orifice is given. Um, I believe it is 1.32 millimeters, but it's also given in the handout. And C sub D is fit to data, and this is a very good correlation. P sub R is the atmospheric pressure over the pressure in the tank. Okay, so atmospheric pressure we said was 740 millimeters of mercury divided by the pressure in the tank. Be sure you're using absolute pressure on these. Okay. Um, in the case of ours, they go through a little bit of an explanation here, but for our particular cases, we can uh, use this expression here for uh, the gamma or the capital gamma or the Y, okay? But we can say um, this case, yeah, that's what we're gonna end up using. Now we just use, y equals 1. You can do this entire expression if you want to. You'll get a better fit, but you can also work with just y equals 1. It's not too far off. Now kind of a consolidation of all of those. Um, this is sort of the main set of formulas that you end up with. Just a summary here of everything. Uh, again, we used this uh, simplification it's not exactly right. If you want to program in the correct thing, that would be probably better. You have formulas for the density given here. This ratio is the atmospheric pressure over the tank pressure. Gamma here is 1.4. All right, so this concludes this video lesson. You want to also watch that video of the experiment and get the data from that. And uh, we will see you in the next lesson. Thank you.